would you say are some of your top mistakes that you've learned from, mm -hmm. especially in this growth phase, like between 2015 to 2023 and building the business? Yeah. 20, okay. The big Since you took over Premier again. Yeah. Right. I'll tell you, the biggest mistake was, um, I don't know, maybe 10, 11 years ago, right? Um, and, and, and I could be at fault, too, for the, some of the Doug things that, that happened, right? So, um, and this was my first couple of years of Entrepreneurs Organization, right? So we had an office, and I would come by a couple of times a week. They knew I was coming and things like that. I normally walk into the office. You hear people on the phones, you know, people laughing, giggling, whatever, by the water fountain. That, that was the joke and things like that. And that day I walked in, and um, it was kind of silence. It was around 920. And I walked in down the hall, I'm like, where is everybody? And then I looked around here, where is everybody? And then they were in the conference room. So it was the core team, really. I had an assistant there, Tanya. Doug was there. Um, and <laughs> it's funny, right? Um, now that, this, that you brought this out. Okay, so I walk in, and I'm like, <laughs> what's going out? What's going on? And uh, they sat me down, and I'm looking around, like, what's going on? And they were all going to quit. Wow. My team was going to walk out on me. Uh, mass mutiny, yeah. Mass mutiny. And I was like, what? What's going on? We're killing it. We're killing the goals. They're killing the goals. And I learned a lot about myself that day. Um, and it was because nothing they did was good enough for me. And that was the thing, right? We'd knock out a goal. We'd hit this policy amount. This didn't matter. Because I was the rah-rah guy, the cultural leader, right? Not the, the, the ops guy, the worker. I wasn't, you know, in the trenches. I was the... Rainmaker slash goal setter, right? And they were going to walk. They were going to walk. And I, at that moment, I had my aha, my two by four, my forehead, whatever you want to call it, right? And I literally broke down in, in, in tears because one of the, you know, Doug, first of all. So they brought you in the room and they're sharing with you their, they're out the why door. they're upset and, and why they're leaving. It was and a roasting. Okay. Yeah. And you took it. You, and I you, took it. You sat there and you listened. Listen, the but, top of my conference table. Yep. But you could have you could have been resistant to that feedback and you yep. could have walked out yep. and your business probably would have folded. Correct. So I, I have a feeling I know where this is going. So, Correct. So you listened, you cried. You, I listened, yeah. I cried, and I begged. And you begged. And Got I it. begged them to stay. Got it. You know, uh, two stayed. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Out of how many? Really? Out of? Ish. Of your core team? Six, seven. Out okay. of seven. So Two five stayed. left. Oh. My core assistant, Tanya. Okay. Doug stayed. Okay. He stayed. Got you it. know, but the other people, they left. They were, they were just done. And then okay. and, and then I begged them. I promised it would never happen again. That must look, have been a mess. Look it, looking back on it, do you blame them? No. Like the person that you were eight years ago no. compared to now. I blame myself. Okay. Yeah, and I'll good. tell you. Yeah. I mean, that's, so that's, what yeah. have you put in place to kind of because I'm I'm dealing with this a little bit too personally. I'm I'm like I'm that personality. I'm very transactional. Right. We're doing so much business. We're, we're, we're busy. So right. the focus is let's, let's handle the customer and just get it done. And I forget about, forget about everybody on right. our team. Right. right. Yeah. So I get it. Cause yeah. we're in ninja mode, right? We're in yeah. warrior mode, like clients calling us. And that's my biggest anxiety, right? Is you're speaking to the clients. It's, you know, you have your integrity in your word, right? And then the team is screwing it up or something like that. And that's the anxiety and the panic as mm -hmm. as leaders that we, you know. I, we you all got, go through it. Right. Believe me. Yeah. And we've yeah. got to trust the team mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But um, I, it, it was a wide opening awaken. And, and, and what's funny is in the next week, I know where I, where I got it, right? I, um, I got a divorce, which... Part of that was a divorce, led to my divorce, mm. I believe, too, because my, my ex-wife was awesome, and uh, today we're best friends. She's remarried. People don't even like that. You guys are divorced. Great co-parents, <laughs> all that stuff. So um, um, I, I got divorced. I moved to Aventura. I had a loft, and my dad, I called my dad, and I have two boys. At that time, they were six and nine, and, I'm hang and I asked my dad to hang a TV up on a wall, right? The flat TVs just came out, and, um, and I'm sitting there, and my dad asked me for a tape measure. Right? And I'm sitting on the couch and I told him I don't have a tape measure. And this, this. I got a 30 minute lecture on not being a man and not having a tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing. Right? And I started laughing. And I looked up and I'm like, oh my God, that's me. Right? That's me. And I'm doing it to my children. I'm doing it to my staff. I did it to my ex wife. 
will eventually watch this and she knows that I, I've apologized to her um, and things of that nation, taking responsibility. And I did it to everybody. So that, that, would, that was my eye. Pe aha. People were never good enough. Yeah, right. right. People yeah. were never good enough. Got it. Right. No, no matter what you did. But really, yep. what is it? It's a reflection of myself yeah. and how I felt about me. I, right? That's what it came from. But I saw the pattern from my father. Yeah. Right? And his father. Sure. Right? So if you find those cycles in your family <laughs> and in your life, believe break me, yeah. break them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it only works with self-reflection. Right? And vulnerability <laughs> and things right. like that. But yeah, uh, as far as leadership, the best uh, thing I ever did was become the president of Entrepreneurs Organization. Why? Because try to lead leaders. Okay? I came in Trump style. Okay, and you know, I did. I came in a dictator, right? I had an agenda, I'm gonna grow the chapter, we're gonna do this. Well, the other 18 board members who also run multi-million dollar companies, they're like, well, some of us don't wanna do that. Yeah. <laughs> who are and you it's, right, to and tell it's us a, what to do? Right, yeah. And it's a volunteer board, okay? <laughs> of entrepreneurs learning and growing from each other, right? Yeah. So what I learned after about four months of, of, of really failure at, at, as the president of the organization is, um, allow teams to author their own things, right? And that's why, by the way, I use something called EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating Systems. We have a level 10 meeting. It starts with a, a one word opener on how you feel emotionally. And then eventually we get to something called what's working and what's not, right? And the team talks about what's working and what's not. I'm almost a servant leader, right? You know, setting direction, culture, things like that. And then what's working and what's not, they call it out. Then when we pick the three topics that are the highest, we go to issue, solve, discuss, right? And then we go to solutions. Who authored it? The board, the team, right? Who's got the buy-in? They do. Who's leading the way or on the mission? Me. And that was one of the biggest. And today, that's how my company's run. Amazing. Right. That's, that's how the whole company is run. And that's completely changed the culture. Do have you, <coughs> have, have you had any mutinies in the last few years? No mutinies. <laughs> because it's, you put this in place. Yeah. Right. Extreme, <laughs> uh, extreme loyalty. Everyone feels valued. That's great. Like it's crazy. Right. But they have to, you know, and, and by the way, when we do a bad hire, I don't fire them. The team weeds them out. They weed themselves out, <laughs> yes. right? And by the way, I interview, HR interviews, and then the team, the top team interviews. Mm -hmm. And and the key is, are they one of us, Yeah. right? Yeah. Not the resume. The resume, oh, I got 27 licenses and 14 insurance certifications and right, great. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Who are you, yeah. right? Core are, values, right? You core said values. it earlier. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. They don't core, fit in. Are you coachable? You know, do our core values find a way Right, uh, one of my friends, Noah Rosenfarb, he runs Freedom Family Offices. He's here uh, in Boca, big multifamily guy. He always says, um, responsive people are successful, right? So we have that in a neon, it's not neon, it's LED today, sign, but it's true. Those are another core values. Not successful people are responsible, responsive. Responsive people are successful. So that's a core value. Commitment, integrity, open and honest communication. Don't try to have a conspiracy behind the team's back, come and tell us what we suck at at the meeting, right? And let's solve it together. Yeah. But it didn't used to be that way. Uh, it should always be an open door policy. If there's an issue, come talk to me about it. 100%. Let's, let's I want to hear what you have to say right. uh, and let's resolve it. And what right. are solutions? Um, I, I like that um, you have, and, and we've implemented this with our firm, is y you have the team that bring the issues up, you listen to it, you communicate, but then you focus on what are what are some possible solutions? What are some resolutions? Let them yeah. help resolve the problem because if it comes from top down and it's forced on them, they're gonna resist. There's no buy-in. Yeah. There's no buy-in. They will yeah. either resist blatantly directly and you'll see it or they will resist subtly and right. just refuse to do it and 100%. yeah so yep. it has to be a, a buy-in and they have to want to do it so i don't know if you've experienced that larry but, oh absolutely yeah. i mean i just had a call this morning um a five minute call hey we, we we've identified this said problem and um and guys a few of them stayed on stayed on the call after the morning meeting and like hey what do you guys think is a good solution? Do you even agree this is a problem? I think it's a problem, right? Right. So, um, and they weighed in and, and uh, we decided to execute on something new for Monday. Yeah. So I, that's great. 
Honestly. Yeah, just shoving things down people's throat, not the solution. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> doesn't and, work. And listen, th there's also a limit to our knowledge too, because we don't live in their heads and we don't do their daily tasks and their jobs. And if anyone would know how to do it better, it should be them, not us. We can right. provide suggestions, we can brainstorm, right. but at the end of the day, it's gotta be something that, again, they, they buy into and it's gotta be logical. So for right me, now. and I don't, you probably, you may experience this in your business too, both your businesses. Uh, Cause I know like, for example, your title girl is an example, Jaren, or she hustles. Um, I'm trying to make sure people don't work too much in, in my business. Right. right now, I'm trying 100%. to give them some level of balance. We're grinding. We're trying to backfill people. We're trying to solve problems <coughs> um, from a efficiency perspective. But um, but you know, some of my people on my team are just working so much. And I'm like, this isn't going to last. This isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. I've actually at GE when I used to work for GE. That's that's what um, some of my uh, bosses used to communicate to me. Larry, calm down. Cause that's right. my, that's my mentality. I'm just going to just go. And then I burn out. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. Right. You right. get excited. I call that ninja mode. I'm in ninja mode. Right? Totally. Yeah. You don't want to be in monk mode all the time either. Right. But a balance. <laughs> a right? balance. Right. A balance. Right. And I'm yeah. either one way or the other. It's like, it's so it's like hard to be in that middle. Yeah. Right. So I have to be aware of that. And I'm trying to be aware of that for my people as well. Right. Yeah. Jack Welch. He ran that company like a madman. That's what I've been told from people that work for him in the uh, in the logistics world and things. But if you read his books, yes. I mean, I'm not saying his style doesn't work, right? Jack Welch, Welch built General Electric to this you know, monster, right? But I, from his books, and I don't, I don't really read books. I listen to audio books. Um, and he ran his company like, like monarchy style, dictator style, yeah. I was told, right? Hardcore, right? And it worked, right? You know, uh We've seen that it, it can work, and I'm not saying but, it's the only style that works, but for me, like, what do I want to be known for, right? He's the richest asshole in the graveyard. <laughs> He's buried in his Rolls Royce, right? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Exactly.